Welcome back, everybody. We're here again. Yet another great commercial from Firematic on the all-new Firematic TV. All right, you know where we're at. I just explained that before. We won't have to go back. I've invited some good friends of Firematic over. I wanted to introduce you all to uh, Joe Seaplack from Lakeland Industries and his son Mike. Mike's over here, uh, as you can see, modeling some uh, some outerwear. And Joe, I think we want to get into that a little bit today. But Joe, thanks for coming over. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thanks for inviting us. Appreciate if you, it. As you guys noticed, Joe, uh, Joe's got one arm that's uh, in an awkward duty. position. Now that's that's exactly what this crazy show will do to you, as you can see. So as Joe recovers over here, I'll make sure we do all of the pointing. If you guys can't see anything at home, let me know. How's that going to work? <laughs> All right, here we go. Joe, listen, um, I'm noticing one thing in particular on Mike right now, and what is that? <laughs> kind of, he's a bright boy, right? Yeah, you see bright. Now, you might be blinded at home, but folks, this is something that we're seeing more and more in the fire industry, and now it's required. So what am I talking about, Joe? Well, back about three, two and a half years ago, 2006, Congress passed a new regulation. They're good at doing that. It says all, uh, all everybody who works on or near a public access highway has to be wearing a high visibility vest. An ANSI 107 vest is what they said two and a half years ago. The ANSI 107 was the standard right. two and, and a half years And that's the... Uh, typical construction standard we're all familiar with, class 2 vest, class 3 vest, the kind of vest that people wear when they're doing construction on a well, highway crew. Let me ask you this, to back up for a second, what's the point of a vest in the first place? It's just to make us more visible? I mean, it's just a safety item. It's, it's a critical safety item. Thank you. Have, have you ever, extremely critical safety Have you ever driven item. down the road and not paid attention to where you're going? I I've almost, too often, you right? know, I'm not going to say I've almost hit people, who knows who's watching, um, but I'll say that I've almost been hit myself before, and that's why I think it's really important that we're bringing this to light in front of people today. So we really have two reasons for this. One, obviously, is the regulatory reason. Congress says we have to do it. But the more important critical reason is we want to protect ourselves, and, and that's, that's a big deal. We work on, our, you know, on highways very close to them all the time. Speeding traffic's going by. People get distracted. They're looking at other things. We all, unfortunately, drive that way. So Congress, in their wisdom this time, decided that first responders should be wearing a high visibility vest. They specified two and a half years ago a vest that met the ANSI 107 standard, which right. at that time was the only existing standard. Uh, good idea, that's what they said. Um, shortly after that, groups of fire chiefs and, and chiefs of police decided that they wanted a vest, if possible, that would meet their applications, kinds of an, kind of an application-oriented standard. So much to the same tune as what we've been talking with a lot of our vendors about today, uh, firefighter feedback led to, led to an increase in safety. I'm not sure if the mic's picking up the uh, woman in the sky here. but I guess that proves we're live, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Live from Indianapolis. Um, okay, so again, firefighter-driven chiefs got together and said that they're looking for something that is applications oriented. For example, we have a vest here that's sized both in, in width and in length to fit over firefighters' turnout gear. If this was a typical construction vest where the guy doing the construction wear, it'd be about here. It'd look like you're wearing a sports bra, frankly. Sure. I mean, it would be like a three-piece suit vest. Obviously small or something that I could put on over the shirt right now. But this is fitting over turnout gear, and we all know turnout gear is extremely bulky. So they came together with a standard, and there's a couple difference on it. It's a new standard called ANSI 207. The ANSI 207 standard does not have class two and class three distinctions. The 107 has a class two distinction, which is no sleeves, and, and class three would have sleeves with a reflective stripe on it. But this standard allows us to have things such as radio pockets, badge holders, mic tab holders, um, and a variety of other items that make it easy and appropriate for firefighters to use. For law enforcement, uh, it gives you access to your, not this vest, but a law enforcement vest would give you access to your duty belt. So it's applications driven. Applications. So now for the viewers at home, those of you that are seeing this vest, you're saying, all right, we're going to have to wear it. So we have to have the components on it that we would need on our regular turnout gear. Yep. And that would be our radio pocket. That would be our mic tab. Now, what became a little confusing along the way was now you had the original standard, ANSI 107, which is specified in the law, and a new standard, ANSI 207, which wasn't written when the law was written. So there is some confusion in the firefighter community, which one do I wear? Fortunately, from Lakeland's point of view, I'm not going to do this right now because I'm kind of clumsy, but if you look at the tab on the back, this is dual certified. This has a tab for ANSI 107 certification and ANSI 207 certification. So this meets its requirements no matter which way you look at it. And then to kind of further make it a little confusing for our fellow firefighters here, uh, effective January this year, 2009, NFPA came out with a standard for purchasing a new fire truck and what's supposed to be on it. And in that standard, they said, 
Now you buy a new fire truck as of January 1st, 2009, and it has to have a vest that meets ANSI standards and is five-point breakaway for every seat. Uh, the five-point breakaway comes into effect. What do we mean by five-point breakaway, Joe? Good question. Breakaway allows you to get the vest off you very quickly by whatever hazard you might run into. Uh, if we're talking about being in the side of, uh, of traffic and let's say a big truck goes by with a mirror sticking out and it's not paying too much attention, he had grabs your vest and you really don't want him to pull you down. So the vest will break away at the shoulder. Here, here. At this, this side here, this side here, and right here. Right down the center. So, so five this, points, people. We're talking two side breakaway, shoulder breakaway, and of course, where we latch it in the front, that makes all five points. Makes you feel a little bit safer that if something were to snag it, you're not going to be going for a ride. That's, that's the whole point. You really don't want to be dragged down the road. So we have almost competing standards here. Fortunately, in the Lakeland vest, you have a one meets 107, meets 207, and has five-point breakaway features. So all the possibility, dimensions, and characteristics of an approved vest are included in the Lakeland vest. Now I see it's highly reflective. I mean, we're looking at what looks like a triple trim here, um, or a, a you know a two-tone trim. I mean, do these vests come in different colors, and can we get different trim packages? You can get in the in the ANSI 207 first responder vest that we're talking about here today, Tom. Um, actually, you you make a make a good point. This vest, again, the Lakeland reflective vests actually do more than the standard requires. The standard really only requires two inches of silver reflective on top of either an orange or yellow background. Mm -hmm. Lakeland takes it one step further. They put this contrasting orange band underneath the reflective stripe. Not required by the standard, but it gives it what they call, you ready? They call it conspicuity. I can barely say that word. Say so so. it three times faster, you might get in trouble with the FCC. So uh, we'll, we'll just so say this, this conspicuity makes it stand out even more than the standard requires. Sure. It doesn't violate the standard, gives you extra protection. Well, I can tell you right now, it stands out to me as I look over at the vest, I can see silver, I can see yellow, and I can see orange. And to me, that pops. So if I'm not paying attention, and unfortunately, if I'm um, looking at my cell phone or I'm paying attention to the accident that's off on the left, I'm going to be a little bit more prone to noticing something that's got now three flashy colors coming off of it. Absolutely. There's a couple other things that Lakeland does that uh, is not required in the either any of the standards, but they do. We mentioned five-point breakaway. Oddly enough, the ANSI 207 standard or the 107 standard does not require breakaway. Lakeland believes it's important. They put it on their vest even before NFPA 1901 came out. So all the Lakeland vests are breakaway. Also, not required in the standard, but important, is FR treated fabric, fire retardant treated fabric. Standard doesn't require it, but Lakeland does it all the time. I can tell you from doing my research, Joe, that there's not many vests out there that are fire retardant as far as other companies go. So I think that's really important for our viewers to know that Lakeland is coming across with something that in conditions that are, let's face it, not great, a rescue, a vehicle, an extrication, something where we have to wear these vests, but we have the ability to get a quicker, a flash fire, it's not going to go up in flames. Absolutely. At Absolutely. least not right away. It's fire resistant, fire retardant. Um, yep. That's what we look for in this business. Let's face it, there's always the hazard of fire. Uh, the other thing I wanted to look at here, Joe, let's say we have an, o we, an oversized vest. Right. I mean, this is something that fits over the turnout gear. Let's say I'm a skinnier guy. I mean, uh, Mike here, being the good sport that he is as a model, he's pretty well built. Um, he's fitting into this all right, but let's say I, I don't have all that size, or I don't have the girth to be able to fit into a vest. In this particular case, is this adjustable at all? I mean, is this something I can make tighter? Yeah, absolutely, and again, another another feature of these vests is they basically come in two sizes, regular and oversized. Most ANSI vests come in multiple sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, and so on, which frankly is a real inventory issue for fire departments. How many different vests do I need? You don't need that with the Lakeland vest. You yeah, have adjustable sides right here so it allows you to let it out or take it in um, so you really end up only with two sizes the regular for most situations and the oversized for those husky guys that we have in some of our crews which uh, which is which is huge and I mean no pun intended that it's huge it allows us to take this vest and go from a medium out to a triple X correct yes, yes. so I mean there, there is a broad range of people you can put into this you know short small big and tall uh, <laughs> Sound like I'm sell selling shoes now. Go figure. Um, we can get everybody into this vest. So, um, you know, Joe, I just I wanted to thank you for coming over again. It's obviously a very functional product. I know the viewers at home are wondering, well, why do we have to do this? That was an extremely good explanation. Anti 207. It came out. It made us all go out and buy these. And Joe, you know, as always, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll a lot. take care of the arm. Mike's a good sport. Um, we're talking about Lakeland products. Go up on shopfirematic.com. Check it out.